In this episode, we have a Sony DA4ES. This is a high-end, multi-channel digital receiver. And the complaint on this one is it shuts down when hot. So it's going to be a connection problem. And there are some areas of this unit where there were some very common failures. I'm going to show you what to look for and how to fix this one. Let's check it out. So this is a seven channel amplifier, discrete seven channel amplifier out of one of Sony's higher end products. This is actually a very good receiver, but again, it does suffer from some common faults that come up time and time again. And you can get all kinds of strange problems, but the most common one is it shuts down or the sound cuts out. Now this unit's a monster. Look at the size of the power transformer on this thing. This unit here weighs probably around 50 to, or so pounds. Very heavy, very well built, all discrete outputs. This unit does not feature any HDMI inputs. It's component and optical and coaxial digital input, component video. But look at how well this thing's built. Heavy output transistors, big output transistors, heavy duty construction. There's no fan in this sucker. They drain off that heat with large heat sinks. Some manufacturers will put a fan in them to keep them cool, but nope, Sony, just convection. Over here, we've got our digital board. This is where all the digital audio processing goes. One of the problems that sometimes happens on this is these regulators, which are mounted with these uh, heat sinks on them. The connections fracture on that. So we're gonna, we're gonna inspect those connections and also some of the common problems is where there is uh, connections to like these headers sometimes connections break here on some of these one right there right in front of you it looks to be bad so we're going to inspect all of these uh, connections and uh, see if we can see any bad ones this amplifier uses the sap 17 darlington MOSFET power packs. You'll see an SAP 17 NO and a PY. One's an N type, the other's a P type. There's two of them required per channel. They have built in temperature compensation diodes and emitter follower resistors built in. So there's two of them per channel for each of the front channels. And then on the other heat sink is the output transistors for the rear channel. So here's the outputs for the four rear channels. So a total of seven channels together. And down here, this is where I suspect the problem is. These are the voltage amplifier, the driver ICs. And these are more than likely where the problem with this receiver is. In fact, I can say with confidence, without even looking at it, that this is where the problem is going to be, is how common this failure is. I pull the bottom off it and wiggle the IC on the top, and you can see all the pins moving. This is the problem or one of the problems with this unit. And what causes it is the thermal transfer of heat through the pins. It causes the solder to expand and contract. And because it's different types of metal, it expands and contracts at a different rate, which causes thermal stress and it breaks. And it's because they didn't put enough solder on at the factory. Had they put enough on, it wouldn't have failed like this. Check out pin 15, it's cracked all the way around. It's not the only one though, there are several. If I pan the camera across, you'll see that uh, IC651, there are several connections cracked, as in IC501, like pin 3, for example, even pin 1. This is uh, where the problem is going to be on this unit. So for starters, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resolder both of these driver ICs because this one is definitely bad, well, both of these, 501 and 651. Definitely. They're not going to be the only connections in this unit, though. So because I found some that are bad, we're going to check everything else. I'm going to pull the digital board out, and we're going to inspect the regulators because the regulators themselves have been known to go bad as well. I don't know whether they're bad on this one at this point, but uh, we're going to uh, check them out anyway and give this one a complete check over before sending it out. But the number one cause of failure on all these Sonys, it's not just this one, but any of these amplifiers that use these voltage uh, modules, these voltage amplifier modules, this is 
the most common problem. And I've done hundreds of them, literally hundreds, in multiple models. So this is by no means a problem that's limited to this model. Now, it's not just Sony that has these type of problems. Other manufacturers have similar problems when you're dealing with these high output power modules, these output ICs. Biggest uh, problem with all of them was uh, solder connections between the board and the thick film IC, as it's called. So, Q591, I think that's what it says there. It's a, a regulator transistor. It's also bad, as you can see. So we're going to inspect all of these regulator transistors and regulator ICs because this is a, a, a common, as I say, a common problem on uh, yeah, on these uh, units. I kind of just bridged the solder there, but we'll we'll take care of that. Let's get to uh, clear that solder bridge. Hey, it happens to the best of us, right? Now, someone's going to whine and say it's because I'm putting on too much solder, but that's got nothing to do with it. You need liberal amounts of solder. Solder with an L. That's the right way to pronounce it. All you guys that say solder are saying it wrong. But all these regulators are going to get redone because they're all problematic on units like this. Anytime you see any of these grounding screws that have got a tab on them, make sure they're tight. That was another common point of failure on a lot of these Sony receivers was the copper screws that they put in tended to back away from repeated use. So whenever you see any of these boards that uh, have a grounding lug, give the screw a bit of a turn and make sure that it's tight. Regulators on the digital boards don't cause a lot of problems on this, but one that we do have to check is this daughter board here. This daughter board has the driver ICs for the rear channel. And like the main ones, they develop bad solder connections. So we need to pull this board and check these ones out. This board's very easy to remove. Two screws, and it will unplug from the main board. There's, main, there's connectors that go onto the main board. And then, of course, a couple of audio connectors that plug into it. But it unplugs very quickly very quick and easily and as you can see it's got two more of these drive ICs that we need to check and chances are they're bad as sure as the Sun they're bad IC 601 look at them they're all bad both of them broken connections let's fix them so my trolls are going to be telling everyone that I don't know how to solder, that I'm putting too much solder on and the whole bit. Don't believe anything that they say because they don't have a clue. And I don't care what degrees they're going to say they have. They don't have a clue. The key to repairing these units so that they don't break again is to put a liberal amount of good quality leaded solder, none of this lead-free crap, and lots of heat. That is key. Lots of heat. The reason these failed in the first place is because when they were manufactured, they used wave soldering, which did not get these connections hot enough and did not put enough tin on the connection to bond the copper trace to the copper component lead, which led to failure. There are a lot of keyboard experts out there who think they know everything, who have maybe done a little bit of work as a hobbyist and maybe even some that will say that they worked in a shop and ran a shop well I've been in the business since 1980 and I made a living doing this for over 20 years I left the industry in 2003 and started just doing the odd job at home like I'm doing here in all my years I've never, ever had one of these come back once it's been done. They had a very high failure rate from the factory. But once they've been done properly, I've never had a failure. Not once. And I have done hundreds of these things. So there's nothing wrong with my soldering. And anybody has a problem with it, they're the ones with the problem. 
in addition to the ICs, I'm also resoldering the connections on the connectors that connect to the main board. And I will do the ones that these meet with on the main board as well, because they also have a tendency to crack. Not to the same degree as the components that get hot, but they do have issues. So while the board is out, I'm going to inspect all of them. And anything that looks even slightly questionable is going to be redone. I have the opportunity now while the board's out. So any of these connections on any of the plugs that look like they possibly could be bad, I'm going to do it. And you should do it as well. If you're working on one of these, inspect all the plugs, inspect the regulators, and especially those high power ICs because those ones are known issues. But if you redo all the plugs, then you'll never have a problem with it. So we'll reconnect the audio and power connectors to the daughter board and then plug the daughter board back into the main board and the units ready to test daughter board just make sure you get the alignment correct on the plugs and it will just pop into place and then it's held in place with the two screws notice on the heat sink the little dots on the heat sink they formed a perfect sine wave Way to go, Sony. So I connect the unit up with headphones before plugging in speakers, and I want to see if it's working, and guess what? I've got no sound. So we have a secondary problem. We have another component that's likely was damaged due to the connections that failed. When I crank up the volume, I can hear some distortion in the headphones, but I'm not getting any sound. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at uh, whether get, we're getting any signal in and out of the driver module when I ran my fingers over it I could hear noise like hum in the headphones so I know that the outputs are working so I just measured and found that I had signal going in that's controllable from the volume control but I had no signal coming out of the IC to drive the outputs so we have a loss of signal in the IC let's go and get the service data for these driver ICs so we can figure out the pin out and see if we're missing a supply voltage. These are the ICs here. They're an NEC UPC2581V. They're a voltage amplifier IC and here's the pin out. Okay, well, we've got our data sheet here. Our muting input is number one. We've got our our, our drive output on pins 2 and 3, a composite output on pins 4, pre-drive, and our in is on pin, ground is 7, in is on pin 8, in 1 is on pin 6, in 2 is on pin 8, and this is our composite output 10, and then our drive output 11 and 12, and our 13, 14, and 15, these are our VCC1, VCC2, and VEE. These are our, our power supply voltages. I remember, if you if you remember, it was pin 14 and 15 where the connections were cracked before. I just want to keep this camera where you can see what I'm doing and see the voltages. So we'll look at uh, pin 14 first. Let's get my light in the way here so I can see what I'm doing. So pin 14 is this one here. And I got no voltage on it. Hmm. I would explain why it's not working. What about this one here? I got no voltage here either. I got no voltage. I got minus 53 volts on that one, which is the VEE. But my VCC1 and VCC2, which is pin 13 and 14, I've only got 0.6 volts. Hmm, that looks a little low. I'll put on the other IC, minus 53, and again, I've got no voltage here. So, we have a problem. We have to find out what that voltage is supposed to be and trace it back and see why we don't have it. So the voltage I'm gonna be missing is my positive 55 volts. Because we've got the negative 55 here. We should, that's our, our VEE, so our VCC should be the positive voltage and we have it here there's our 55 volts 
So I'm just looking through the circuitry here and following it to see where it goes. Because it's obviously it's going to go probably through a resistor somewhere and a, a takeoff for that other supply. Our, our B plus comes up here. And that's our negative supply. B plus comes up here. And ah, this might be that may be a resistor right there. It's not marked anything on the board, but I think we may have a resistor that may have gone open. Because there's that 0 0.6 volts, which is what I'm seeing here. I think, I think that's probably a resistor. It's coming up 18k ohms. Uh, yes, it is a resistor that I pulled out. When I measure it, it's measuring 18k. But I don't know if you're able to see the, the color coding there. We'll zoom in here and see if you can see the color coding. It's, it's brown. Looks like brown, black, black. So that's 10 ohms. We're measuring 18K. That resistor is open. So that resistor is R591. And it's just a fusible resistor in the protection circuit for the ICs. Okay, we've got everything resoldered back in. Reconnect our power connector for our power supply. Turn on the power. I would say we have sound. It is working, so there you go. Nice Sony DA STR DA4ES was dead. I was told it when well, it overheated it shut down. Well we know why it over we know why it shut down when it heated up. Solder connections on the drive ICs went bad. It also kicked out a little 10 ohm fusible resistor. We replaced the resistor, resolder all the connections, units fixed. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.